Okay, so today we want to start with what's called a stem and leaf plot. So, stem and leaf. And what this is, is it's a really quick, easy way to organize some data, usually used when you have a relatively small sample. Okay? So let's take a look at this example here. We have 20 student test scores. And I'm just going to write them up on the board, and then we're going to make a stem leaf plot with them. So 57, 69, 84, 64, uh, 52, 67, 93, 72, 61, And 74.55. And 79.82. And 65.61. And finally, 63.77. OK? And again, this represents 20 student test scores. And the directions are simple. It will say, construct the stem and leaf plot using this data, or something along those lines. All right. <coughs> now, just a reminder, um, how do I find range of data? What would my range of this be? What would I do? You take your lowest and your highest number, um, add them, and divide by two. Uh, almost. The range is easier than that. Highest and lowest, and, yeah, just, and yeah. just subtract. Yeah. So what's my highest in this? Looks like 93, maybe? And what was my lowest score here? 52. 52. Okay, cool. So all of the test scores fall within the range from 50s to the 90s. Is everybody with me on that? Okay. Now with the stem and leaf plot, we have Part of a number represent what we call the stem, and we have the other part represent the leaf or the leaves. Okay? Now, if all of these test scores range from the 50s to the 90s, then the stem part is going to be that first digit, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and the leaf part is going to be the ones digit. Okay? And what I mean by that is, well, let's just start the plot. We're going to have a line, and you're going to have stem, and you're going to have leaf. Okay, all of the data again goes from 50s to 90s, so I'm just going to have a 5, a 6, a 7, an 8, and a 9. And those represent the stems for this data. Okay, so this is going to represent all the scores in the 50s, all the scores in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. If we had 100, I'd also have a 10 here, but we don't. Okay. All right, and it's pretty easy. All I have to do is I have to go through and look at all the scores in the 50s and just put them in order, okay? So if I had a score of a 50, a 52, and a 58, I have a, a zero, a two, and an eight. And that would represent that, okay? So let's look, how many scores in the 50s do we have? We have a 52, a 57, a 55, a 55. okay? So again, put this in order. So we have a 52, a 55, and a 57. So that represents those three scores. Does that make sense? Okay, and then you just continue on through the rest of this. So I'm gonna go to the 60s now. We have a nine, a four, a seven, a one, a five, a three, and an eight, and another one. Okay, and so we put those in order. So you're gonna have one, one, three, on and on and on. Lots of scores in the 60s. Okay, um, let's pick up with the 70s then. We have a 72, 274, a 77, and a 79. 
So again, you want to put that in order. So two, four, four, seven, nine. And moving to the 80s, we have a 2, a 4, and an 8, I believe. And then finally with 90s, I only see the 93, so just a 3. Okay? And then depending on your book and how you feel about it, sometimes we just kind of put a little box around this to finish off our stem and make and that's it. Okay. Relatively simple. It's just a quick organization plot. Okay? Now, there's a couple of things that we might do to this demo leaf plot. And a good example would be on this problem. Let's say I had maybe 10, 15 more scores in the 60s. Okay? On this example, if I had 10 or 15 more scores in the 60s, what is that stem leaf plot going to look like? Does everybody understand what I mean? If I had even 10 more scores in the 60s, what is this plot going to look like? Yeah, you're just going to have a really long row here that goes on and on and on. Okay? So when we have a lot of data for the same stem, what we can do is do two rows. So instead of if I had that, I would have two sixes. Okay? And then scores from 60 to 64 would be on the first line and 65 to 69 would be on the second line, okay? So if you have a lot of, lot of data in you might have something like that, okay? And that's a simple way of still keeping this what we call pretty, all right? So that could be something that you might utilize. Another thing that might happen is, what if uh, the teacher wanted to compare scores with one class and another class, okay? To handle that, you would do a double display. So I'd still have the stems right here, but then I'd have one class with scores going this way, and maybe one class with scores going this way. And you can see them side by side, okay? And that would be a double display, instead of me. All right, question? How would you organize that? Would you put the lowest number towards the stem or further away? Yeah, so it's it's always just away is the higher. Yeah, so it would go 0, 2, 8, 1, 3, 5, so it would go that way. Okay? Other questions on the stem and leaf? It's pretty easy. You utilize it for smaller uh, sets of data. Okay, good. Let's erase this and move on then. Okay, so what we've done so far, we've organized data, we've put it into a frequency table, we've drawn some graphs, we've looked at a plot. Now we want to start looking at specific values, okay? And we call, sometimes the heading for this would be um, specific measures of central tendency. Okay, so we're going to look at finding stuff that you as a statistician would have to find. All right, the first one is the mean. Okay? Now, I'm also going to introduce today some symbols that we're going to utilize the rest of the semester. Okay, so we really want to start memorizing these symbols now. So, um, this little x with the line above it, we call that x bar. Okay? So that's pronounced x bar, and that's representative of the sample mean. This cursive looking M guy is pronounced mu, and he represents the population mean. Okay? So if you happen to have the whole population, which is very rare for us, but if you do, you might be asked to find mu, which is the mean of the population. Usually we're dealing with the sample, so with the sample they will say find x bar, which is the sample mean. Okay? When you think of mean, it's just like arithmetic mean, right? If you had some test scores and I said, hey, what's the average of your test scores? How would you get that? 
Adam all up and divide by, divide by however many test scores there are. And that's exactly what we're doing here. That's what a mean is, okay? Now again, I'm gonna give you some kind of symbolic notation, but let's just make sure we understand what this is. So to find the mean, we're gonna sum up, so this guy means to sum up all the x's, which is your test scores in that example I'm referring to, and then divide by n, and n would represent the number of test scores, okay? So again, you're gonna add up all of your values in your sample, and then you're gonna divide by the total numbers in your sample, okay, and that's what this means. That little e thing is a sum? Sum, yeah, summing, it's a summation. All right, so let's just do an easy example. Uh, let's give you some quiz scores. Maybe I have an 80, 85, 62, 78, 90, 82, 30, 70, 80 and 100. Okay? And I say, all right, this is, these were your quiz scores for the semester. I want you to find your sample mean. Find x bar. So again, we're going to add all of these scores. 80 plus 85 plus dot 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 plus 80 plus 100. How many quiz scores did we have? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So you're going to add up those 10 values, and then you're going to divide by 10, and that will be your mean. Okay, so go ahead and do that for me, please. It comes out to what? 75.7. 75.7, exactly. Did everybody get 75.7? Individual scores. Okay. So okay. if you want to put an index here, x sub i, so that would be x1, x2, x3, x4. That's all of the scores. Okay. All right, so 75.7, do we agree? Yeah. Okay, great. And that's it. So anytime you're asked to find the mean, x bar, add them up and divide by the total. Okay? It's one of the measures that we look at. All right, let's take a look at this example and see how you would do this. Let's say I have some data, and it represents quizzes, again, but I have it in frequency distribution. So you could get a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 on this quiz, and I have your frequency. 2, 8, 5, 2, 3. And it just wants you to find x bar. So I've done a little bit of a curveball at you. I don't have all of the values listed down, but I have a frequency distribution of those values. But I still want to find x bar. Question number one I might ask you is, how many people took this little quiz? And how did you get 20? Right, the sum of the frequency, we always draw a line here. And that tells us how many we're looking at, okay? So that's great, because whenever you're finding a mean, you have to divide by the total. So we know we're dividing by 20, okay? Now, how do I get my sum of the x's? How do I get the total scores and then divide by 20? What do I do next? Multiply score and frequency? Yeah, and what would that do? It would give you the, the number of scores, the test scores. Right, so, okay. So I'm trying to find x bar. Let's do a little quick table of x times f. So 0 times 2 is 0. 1 times 8 is 8. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 2 is 6. And 4 times 3 is 12. OK? Now, we already talked about just adding up the frequencies. That's going to give me the total number of people that took this quiz. What this is going to give me is a quick way to get the sum of all the scores. Okay, so 
one way that you could do this is you could be like, okay, two people scored a zero. So I have zero and zero. I have eight people scored a one. So I have one, 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 right? And I could start adding all of these up. But hopefully you can see that this is a quick shortcut for adding this up. Eight people scoring one, if you add that up, that's going to be eight. Okay, so this is going to be a, a quick way to get my sum of the quiz score. All right, so let's add this up. And what do we get? 36. 36, great. So x bar is going to be the sum of all the scores, which is 36, divided by the total number of scores, which is 20. And what is that going to come out to? 1.8. So that's the mean for that one. So that's pretty much how you're going to have to do it if you're given a frequency distribution to find the mean. Okay, great. So that's pretty much it for finding mean. Let's move on to some other measures. Let's do median. Okay, median, what is that? It refers to the middle number. Median refers to the middle number after data has been sorted. Okay? So your median refers to the middle number after you have sorted the data. All right, let's take a look at this example. I have nine students and their age. So let me give you these numbers. We have 21, 25, 43. 28, 18, 28. 32, 20, 21. Okay. Nine students and their ages. And what I would like you to do is find the median, okay? which is the middle number, and again, super important, after you put it in order. Okay? You can't just take a bunch of numbers and circle the middle one. That's not the median. You have to put it in order first. Okay? So you have two steps to do. Step one, arrange this in order from least to greatest. So do that first. And then let's see if we can find that middle number. All right, so I'm going to arrange it. So it looks like 18 is the lowest. And then we have a 20 and two 21s. Okay, so 20 All right, then I have a 25 and two 28s. Then a 32 and a 43. Okay, how many people did we look at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So n is nine. So I'm gonna have four, a middle number, and another four, right? Does everybody agree the median here is 25? Okay, pretty easy. So your answer is median equal 25. All right, that example worked out really, really nice. What well, might be a question that you might ask me? What could have happened here? Especially when it's like uh, even number. Even number, right? What if there were 10 students instead of 9? Okay? So what happens when I do that? Great. I'm glad you asked that question. Let's throw in another age. Let's throw in another 43. Okay? So when you have an odd number, it's easy. Just go to the middle. When you have an even number, so when n is even, Your median is the average of the two middle numbers. Okay? So when we have an even amount of numbers, when n is even, your median becomes the average of the two middle numbers. So notice here, now I have 10 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which means 25 and 28 are the two middle numbers, okay? So 25 and 28. The median is gonna be the average of those two numbers, okay? 
So you could do 25 plus 28 and divide by 2, and that's going to be your median. All right? And that's going to ha handle every case. So if you have an even amount, that's how you do it. If you have an odd, it's just in the middle. All right, so with 25 plus 28, what's the median? 26.5. Okay? That's all there is to it. Median is a middle number. If it's even, it's the average of the two middle numbers. Okay. Next measure of central tendency after median, we do mode. M O D E. Mode represents the most occurring number. Okay? If you look at all of your data, whichever number occurred more than all the others, that's your mode. But we have to be careful here because it's possible, it's possible to have one mode, it's possible to have zero modes, it's possible to have two or more. Okay? So don't be surprised. Anything can really happen with modes. All right, let's do some examples. Let's take a look at this really small data set. 10, 5, 10, 8. All right, everybody, what's the mode of that data set? 10. 10, right? 10 occurred twice, and that was the most occurring number. That's it. That's the mode. Okay, example two. How about this data set? We have 8, 10, 8, 10, 12. 8 and 10. What's the mode? 8 and 10. 8 and 10. They're both modes, right? Does everybody see that? Because they both occurred more than any others in that they both occurred twice. All right, example three. 0, 1, 4, 8, Six. What is the mode in that data set? Zero. Okay, so this is where it gets tricky, right? We could say, well, there's really no modes there because no one number occurred more than the others. Or technically you could say they're all modes because they all occurred the most and that they all occurred once, which was the most in this example, okay? Usually for an example like that, we will say there are no modes, okay? All right. And that is mode. Any questions on that one? Again, relatively easy, whichever one occurred the most. Okay, the next one that we want to do, mid-range. So we have range, and what was range again? Highest minus lowest. Okay, so don't get that confused with mid-range. This is the lowest number in your data plus the highest number in your data, and then divide that by two. Okay? So you just take the smallest number plus the highest number and divide it by two. That's all there is to it. It's called the mid range. Okay? So again, we'll do an easy example. So let's say I have some numbers. And I asked you to find the mid-range. You just use this formula. What is the lowest number in this data? Nine. Nine. What's the highest number? 100. 100. And whatever 109 divided by 2 is, what is that? 54.5. Mid-range. OK? Great. OK, here's what I want to do. I want to put all of these together and do one example. And I want you to find all four measures, OK? All right, so here's the situation. We are interested in purchasing a house. And we want to live on this particular street, maybe, possibly. And we have a realtor 
and we are looking at six houses on the same street. Okay, so I'm going to give you the price of the homes, all on the same street. And let's see, the first one was two hundred and fifteen thousand. The second home is two hundred thousand. The third home is two hundred and twenty thousand. The fourth home is two hundred and ten thousand. Whoops. Two hundred twenty-five thousand. And finally, nine hundred and seventy thousand. Okay? The question you ask your realtor is what is the average cost of a home? This street. Okay? What I would like you guys to do is do all four. Okay? Tell me what X bar is. Tell me what the median is. Tell me what the mode is. Actually, I'll tell you what the mode is. The mode is none. Okay, so I did one for you. And tell me what the mid-range is. And then let's talk about these values once we obtain them. Okay? So take a few minutes, find the mean, find the median, find the mid-range. There is no mode because no value occurred more than the others. What did you guys get for the mean? 340,000. 340,000? Okay, and again, to get the mean, you add up all of the home prices and divide by six, because there were six homes. Okay, good. Let's move on to the median. Put the homes in order from least to greatest. I gave you an even amount of homes, so you're gonna have to take the two middle homes and find the average of the two middle homes. Yeah. 217,500. 217,500. So then the two middle homes must have been 215 and 220. Is that what everybody got? And then the average of those two? Great. Mid-range, lowest plus highest divided by two. What was the lowest? 200 plus the highest is 970, right? So what is 200,000 plus 970,000 divided by 2? 585. Okay, great. All right, so let's go back to the question. A couple is looking at buying a house in this uh, neighborhood. They want to know the average cost of a home. You're the realtor. You have all of this information. What do you say the average cost of a home is? When they say average, when we say average in everyday life, do we mean arithmetic mean? Is that what we're saying? When you say, hey, what's the average cost of a home on the street? Do we mean, oh, add up all of the homes and divide by the total? Okay. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, so notice all of the homes are kind of in the 200,000s except for this one outlier okay so in statistics we might consider this an outlier because it's kind of far away from the rest of them and in all of these 
only the median is not affected by any outlier, right? So the average obviously is, because you have to add him in. The mid-range, it's the lowest and the highest. But the median, that's the one that is not affected by extreme values. We're just going to take the middle number, OK? So it's possible. Um, let's do another example, OK? Let's say your grades and stats. Let's say we have four tests. All right. On the first test, you get a 95. Pretty good. On the second test, you get 100. On the third test, you're doing great. You get another 100. Okay. On the fourth test, the night before your fourth test, your boyfriend or girlfriend broke up with you, right? Um, you didn't have time to study. It was just one of those days. You came in and you did the best you could, but you got an eight. Okay? All right, and then there's your teacher, Bobby, looking at these grades, and he has to give you a grade, right? So why don't you just find x bar for this, and why don't you find the median for this? Okay? And you tell me which is more accurate to what type of student that person is. All right, so go ahead, find x bar real fast, add those four scores, divide by four. What's the average come out to? 75.75. 75? Is that what you said? 75.75. 75.75. OK. And that is a solid C student. What's the median come out to in this problem? 97.5. 97.5. Man, that's a really high A. Maybe even an A plus. I don't know exactly what the A plus range is. What do you think? Do we think this student is a C student or an A plus student or somewhere in between? What grade would you give this person? An A. An A? <laughs> well, there you go, right? So again, what type of student is this? Are we looking at arithmetic mean where we take in every value? Most grades are based on this, by the way, right? And all the classes that you've had probably since you've been in school, they just average up your grades. Okay. But Again, X bar is influenced by extreme high or low values. The median is not. Okay? The median is just the middle number. That's it. Any questions on what we did today? Okay, great.